Hello and welcome to a City Voices interview with Earl Anderson, who's an alien experiencer. And that means someone who has been, who has had close encounters with alien life forms. Uh, welcome, Earl. Hi there. How are you doing? I'm pretty good. How are you? I'm doing good. Doing good. All right. Now I have like I go by Earl Gray Anderson. It's it's oh. sort of a, everybody. I, I I worked as a musician in the Los Angeles area for many many years, so my stage name was Earl Gray, uh, but my my actual name is Earl Anderson. So I just kind of have incorporated that, you know, Earl Gray Anderson. And you know, I mean, one of the proverbial uh, entities that people see are the little you know the diminutive uh, gray aliens with the black eyes if you've seen the movie paul you know what i'm talking about but but the, that seems to be a very common uh you know entity that people uh have face-to-face -face encounters with okay, so now, I Earl, the now, before works. we go off on tangents i'd like to is it possible that we can stick to the survey that i got from mufon and sure. like there, there's a lot of these questions are really quick, like, you know, just mm -hmm. we can go through them quickly, but then there's some where I would prompt you for like further elaboration. Uh, are you game for that? Yeah, sure. All right. What age were you when you had your first experience? Um, I have to do quick math in my head. Uh, I was around uh, 50, around 55 years old, 50. 54 years old. And I mean, how many was, times do you believe you've been taken? Uh, I've only had one encounter where, and I wasn't taken, I was visited. I mean, they came, literally came through the wall. Okay. Which is not unusual, <laughs> believe it or not. Have other family members experienced abductions uh, or ET contact experiences? Uh, my mother had an experience when she was 16 years old uh, in Muscatine, Iowa, but it was it was it was a visitation and this was by uh, the entity took the form of uh, a basketball shaped ball of sparks, which came into their screened in patio, hovered over her sister, went over and hovered right in front of my mother's face, like eye to eye contact, if it had had eyes. I mean, it was a ball of sparks. Uh, this thing went and pushed its way back through the screened in porch. She ran out after it into the middle of a cornfield, looked up at it, and it, she said that it popped like a soap bubble. And, and that's this pretty cool. of those was in the air. Uh, that's the only other encounter I know of in my family, but my mom uh, later on went to work for Hughes Aircraft, and she do some national secrets and one of them was that we aren't alone that uh, the the idea of aliens visiting earth is actually a reality very good has your ep contact experience changed your religious beliefs um it changed the way that i that i practice them. I, I mean, I, I grew up as a Christian, but I kind of threw out, I kind of kept the baby and threw out all the bath water. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It, it changed the person. Did you believe in the existence of extraterrestrials prior to your event? I always believed that there was life in the universe, but I didn't know that if the UFO phenomena was, was real or not. And, and I became a, I became a field investigator for MUFON. Uh, I had closed a few sighting reports and cases, but then I had a face-to-face -face contact myself. And I, I think that probably the fact that I had become a field investigator for MUFON, the Mutual UFO Network, uh, probably targeted me in a way. Here's a, a somewhat complex question from the MUFON survey. Do you have conscious continuous recall of the observation of non-human or alien entities. And in parentheses, it's not with hypnosis, dreams, or flashbacks. Yeah, I, I remember, I have conscious re recollection of what happened. My okay. wife was involved and for her, uh, she doesn't remember anything except for our room flooding with light that had no source. But for me, I did remember it. Okay. Have you had one or more experiences where you awakened unable to move your body or cry out? Uh, only the one. Okay. The one. 
Have you been uh, awake and able to move your have you been awake and able to move your body, but observed a non-human ET presence and became paralyzed? Uh, yes. Yeah, that is oh. exactly what happened. I was awake. I, it wasn't sleep paralysis. You have to be asleep to have sleep paralysis. And I, I was fully awake when it happened. Do you have conscious memories of moving through the air under someone else's control? And there is no commonplace explanation for this. No, no, that didn't okay. happen to me. Do you have conscious recall of finding yourself in a non-human or alien environment? Um, no, they came to me. They, I, they did a house call. I mean, and it was just that one time, right? Yeah, it was. That's all it really took. I think that uh, it that that was enough. It changed the way that I looked at everything. So no being taken, no examinations, no probes, no anything like that. Um, what happened to me was was that they came, they literally came through the wall. They opened up what I guess was a portal. Uh, the wall just kind of opened up, like if you poured cream into a cup of coffee, this happened to the wall. Uh, first, our room flooded with light. It was, it was gradual. Uh, we had a cricket problem. You couldn't hear crickets. Uh, you couldn't hear external traffic sounds. Time got very weird. Uh, and the wall opened up and they came through. Uh, at this point, I could not move. Uh, I tried to communicate with them mind to mind because I had read some of the literature out there. And I know that a lot of people would get a calming message when this would happen to them. Uh, for myself, uh, no calming message. It, it was just like all business. They came through, they took blood. Uh, they took what I think was life force energy from me. Um, and the whole time they kept staring directly into my eyes and their eyes are like these dark pools of, of eternity. Uh, you can't look away from them and they have a hypnotic effect. Upon so what did they look like exactly? I mean, and how many were there? There were four. Okay. There were four, they were about four foot tall. Uh, they, looked, uh, they, they looked almost uh, not quite formed, okay? It, it, like, like fetus-like almost. Okay, the mouth was just a slit. The nose was an afterthought. The, the main feature that I noticed was, was the cranium was just really larger than a human cranium. Uh, and, and the eyes were almond shaped and, and black and reflective. Were they and, especially large, the eyes? Yeah, they were probably three times the size of normal human eyes. They, take, oh. they took up most of the face. So this is a lot like some depictions of greys, right? The gray aliens. Yeah, it, it was the little gray aliens, which I think may be, I think that they may be biological avatars that they use. Uh, I, I personally, I don't think that people actually meet aliens. I think that we meet their avatars that they use, uh, oh. that they use avatar bodies, you know. Uh, yeah. People, when they are taken to a craft, I think that they meet the actual beings. But uh -huh. I think that when they, when, when you have an encounter on, on the planet, that it's usually those little gray guys, they seem to be sort of ubiquitous from case to case. And uh, I, I think that that's just the mode that they use to interact with us here on the planet. So were, were the greys uh, naked or, or did they wear some suits and did, did they have a smell? Did you smell something? Um, I don't remember there being a smell. Some people remember like a sulfurous smell and, and, and things like that. But uh, uh, tell you the truth, I mean, I was so shocked and, and, and sort of terrified in the moment that I didn't notice a, a smell to them. Um, and as far as what they were wearing, this is another reason why I think that these are just like, that they, that they manufacture these bodies somewhere uh, because there was no sexual uh, indication to their anatomy. It was, okay. I didn't see clothes on them, but I didn't see, I mean, I think that it, that it, it's probably a, a temporary aspect that they take on when mm -hmm. they come here and, and interact with us here on the planet. That that's my personal feelings about it. Okay. I, I may be wrong, but but I've 
you know, I've, I've had a long time to ponder this. And um, did you uh, predict this happening, like have a premonition or it just happened? Um, it happened. Uh, it, I can tell you the, a little background if you'd like. Sure. I mean, I, I had become a, a UFO investigator with MUFON because, my, you know, my mom told me when I was a little kid, and she was a serious person. She'd worked in aerospace. She actually worked for Howard Hughes, Hughes Aircraft at the Sepulveda site here. I was so back her, her and, experience and, happened way before yours, right? Yeah, but she, okay. you know, I, I didn't even really relate that to the idea of alien contact. But, but later on, I found out that that was what it was because it was under it was under intentional control. You know, it wasn't ball lightning or something like that. That doesn't wait for you, you know, and doesn't yeah. move around like it's being piloted. Yeah. But for myself, I, I, I was I, I had started taking cases uh, for MUFON. Uh, a lot of them would be misidentification of, of uh, prosaic objects. You know, people would see the ISS space station and think that was a UFO. People would see a bundle of balloons way up there and think it was, you know. But there were certain cases that I could not explain scientifically. So there was something to this. Now, there is this thing called CE5 um, meditation that, that certain people swear to and, and say that it works. Um, you get into a meditative state and you send out the thought, I would like to meet you, you know, as far as aliens go or, or entities, you know, the, the, I wanted to meet whoever was piloting these craft. So I started doing that. I did that for about two weeks. I didn't really think anything of it to tell you the truth. Uh -huh. It was just kind of like, we'll try. Well, I'll try this, you know, <laughs> And uh, and I literally sent the, the message out there. Yeah, I want to meet you guys. I, I want to see a UFO and you can even abduct me if you want. You know, and I okay. literally sent that out there. Well, it worked. It worked. It worked a little too well because uh, I, I didn't think it was going to happen. And but I went upstairs after closing a few cases uh, that I was working on. Uh, it was about about midnight or one o'clock in the morning it was pretty late uh i was just kind of putting pillows behind my back my wife was already asleep and that's when everything happened uh and i think that it was intentional i, I think that some of it may have been to kind of open my eyes to the reality that this phenomena is a personal thing that people are left with ptsd after having an encounter like this but, I, um, I have no idea I, I, they I just, came I'm, they came they took blood and they took your energy uh that that doesn't seem, like I'm, it I'm sure you didn't much. wish for that <laughs> well i've talked with a couple of people since then i had one friend of mine from the dod that's very up on all this stuff and and i i, I said well they didn't take my dna but they took blood and this person told me well what do you think your blood is that's that's the mm -hmm. you know that that is your dna and that's what what was going on. Um, Let me ask I, you this. Uh, sure. Um, psychic ability, intuitive or psychic ability, um, has that increased in association with the abduction? Well, with the, with the visitation. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Uh, um, I, I, you know, what we find and what I found personally, uh, and I didn't know this before, but it just it's what I've seen is that when people have an encounter with these beings, whether it be an abduction or a visitation, it seems to be 50-50. A lot of people have a visit. Some people are literally taken to a craft. But what we notice in these experiencers is, is that they start manifesting some of the gifts or uh, attributes that we usually attribute to the beings themselves. So psychic ability goes through the roof, um, I started experiencing synchronicities, which uh, Carl Jung said uh, a, a synchronicity is a meaningful coincidence mm -hmm. to where, I, you know, I would be thinking about an author that I wanted to meet. And a couple hours later, there they would be in front of me at the grocery store. 
or I would, <laughs> you know, exact. I mean, it was just like magic, and this still happens. I mean, it happens to me every single day. I mean, can, it's can you can you do it purposefully, like will no. an author at, at a? I wish. <laughs> I wish. So it, I, it, so it sort of just it comes to you out of the blue, right? Yes. Okay. Um, now, I, I, other things that happened is my compassion and empathy became very, very just just expanded to where um, I, I I could really feel people's fear or their their sadness or, or their joy. It is almost like it opened up the antennae, you know, for me to pick up certain things that that I didn't pick up before, you know. Um, let me ask you, so they, they just took blood and, and energy, um, but um, they, they didn't leave any foreign objects in your body, did they? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, personally, uh, you know, the, the aftermath of what happened has been such a positive thing that I don't think that this is a malevolent or negative, you know, uh, um, um, malign force. I feel like that it's actually benign and, and that they're actually trying to kind of, I think humanity that we're sort of at the cusp of, of a great evolutionary change. Uh, mm -hmm. Ray Kurzweil, he wrote a book called the, the, the Singularity. He says within the next 10 years that we're going to become uh, beyond human that uh, we're going, his, his feeling is, is that, that we're going to become one with our computers. And then that, you know, I mean, they're already talking about putting medical chips in people and that you could get readings on your iPhone and stuff. And I, I think that it's just around the corner. I think that this intelligence is known about us, that they've known about us for a long, long, long time. Uh, and, and I think that at certain points in human history, we've we've gotten to where we could destroy ourselves, or we could either become monsters or angels. And mm -hmm. I think that they are interfering with us now because we're at that distinct point in human history, where we can go one of two ways. We could destroy ourselves with nuclear weapons. Uh, we could divide ourselves from each other, or we can become like the human race is supposed to be and be be a positive force but what you know we're we're ready to enter the space age for real now i mean that is 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 happening with, with elon, elon musk talking about going to mars and all this stuff uh before i think that we were contained on earth but now we're about to expand out and i think that if we go out now uh, that we're just going to take our human problems with us, and and I don't think that I don't think that the aliens want Star Wars. I think they want Star Trek. But right yeah. now, the way humanity is, we're we're going to go out there and try and divide and conquer like we do on Earth, mm -hmm. and that's why I think that it's become uh, why things have ramped up and people are having these face to face encounters now. Uh, let's go back to um, talking about a little bit, a little bit more about the psychic ability. Like and now, um, has is is your mother who also experienced an encounter uh, psychic or intuitive? No, she passed away back in 1999. Uh, okay. She wound up becoming a C. She became a headhunter for aerospace uh, CEOs, and I mean, for instance, she single-handedly populated the Rockwell Science Center in Newbury Park from the broom pushers all the way to the astrophysicists and rocket scientists. That was my mom. Uh -huh. uh, and I, you know, this was because of her earlier work with Hughes. Um, with, with officialdom, once they get somebody initiated into this stuff and they get this knowledge and you sign NDAs, you know, non-disclosure agreements, uh, my mom had above top secret clearance. So, um, you know, through, but, but my mom, uh, she knew about ETs. She actually told me when I was a child uh, that, that it was a real thing, that it wasn't an abstract and that the government already knew that we weren't alone, but that they would never tell the public. Uh, my mom told me that uh, they would never tell the public because they were afraid of how uh, humans would react. They were afraid of a bad reaction. She, she mentioned, 
uh, Orson Welles' uh, War of the Worlds radio broadcast and how people were jumping out of windows and draining bank accounts and, and kind of, you know, it, it became pandemonium because people thought aliens were here. And, and, and this was back in 1963 when my mom told me this. I, I was just a young kid. I was five Let me years ask you this. Now, um, when the, I'm assuming that your home, uh, the, the home which was the, uh, the home where the visitation happened, is in like a rural kind of no. country. Kind, no? No. no. <laughs> Not at all. Do you know the? Do you, do you, are you familiar with Burbank, California? Do you know where the Chandler bike path is? Because we lived right along there. I'm on the East Coast, but tell me more. Oh, okay. Well, my wife, uh, my wife works at a major uh, studio out here, and uh, and so we were living in Burbank because it was easier for her to get to work there. Um, and this happened. It was it was in it was not a rural area. It was a urban area. Uh, this is why I believe that it was, I mean, we didn't, they came through the wall and I believe that it was dimensional. I, I, I don't think that they, you know, they didn't fly a flying saucer into our backyard. <laughs> okay, so theoretically, they could visit anyone anywhere mm -hmm. with these portals, right? Yes, yes. Hey, okay, all right. Um, if, see, uh, I, there's actually film footage of a portal. Uh, my friend Caroline Corey, she recently did a film called Tear in the Sky, where she had uh, physicists with all kinds of monitoring devices uh, in Seal Beach, in this area that's a hot spot between Catalina Island and Seal Beach. And they were purposely trying to catch this on film as well as on monitors, and they did. Uh, they were successful. And what they found were the gamma rays were coming out of this tear in the sky that they saw. It's on film. You can see it. Can you uh, send me the link to that? Uh, monitor readings. Hmm? Can you send me the link to that? Sure. Sure. That, it's, that would it's, be great. On, it's on Netflix and stuff. You know, you can stream it. Oh, I, you I don't mean you mean the fictionalized film? No, it's not a fictionalized oh, film. It's, 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 it's a, a documentary. Oh, it's a documentary. Yeah. Oh, and, and are there clips of it on YouTube? I would have to look. I would have to look. I'm not sure. I think it would, would be interesting. Mm -hmm. It would be interesting to attach a clip to uh, this interview. Well, I can send you a photo of uh, of a disc shaped uh, craft coming that that's going into a portal. I I have uh, I I have some photos that a friend of mine who's actually a skeptic, or he was a skeptic, you know. Who's, who lives in the UK that captured this on film. And, and Yeah, just, you know, please send me all sure, the I, I can send that to you. I'll and send even that if you have, you know, if you have more photos, I'd be happy to see them. I'd be, I'd photos be, be are wonderful. Rare. Photos are rare. And do you know why I think they're rare? I don't think that our visitors themselves want the populace to know that they're here. Right now, they can work in secret. Um, it's, you know, individualized. It's person by person. Uh, people say, well, why don't they land on the White House lawn? Well, <laughs> the Chinese balloon that we just had, what did they do? They shot a missile at it. But they what do you make of um, now in the mainstream news, there's more reports from the military and from airline pilots with footage of seeing these crafts doing the zigzagging and doing. Well, I know all those things. people. I, Kevin Day was a strike force commander on the USS Nimitz, the aircraft carrier. Uh, back when they had this encounter with this craft that they called the, the Tic Tac. Now, this object was traveling 18 times the speed of sound, did not create one single sonic boom, okay? It should have created 18 sonic booms. Every time you hit the speed of sound, it's like, it's why you would hear a double sonic boom when the shuttle would land, all right? Well, this was going 18 times the speed of sound. It didn't create a fireball. It was making 90 degree turns and it played cat and mouse with a squadron of planes. It's all captured on FLIR video, uh, infrared video. And uh, it changed all of, well, I mean, you know, it wound up on the front page of the New York Times back in August of uh, 2017. So do and you think it's possible? 
Do you think it's possible that the entities are like, well, now they're the the human race might be more ready to see more evidence of us now. So they're they're willing to allow you know all this yeah. footage. Yeah, sure. Okay. But it's certainly new. I mean, you know, they, the the uh, officialdom has re tried to rebrand the phenomena as UAP, right? Because then they don't have to address things like the way they reacted to the Roswell crash or the 1952 flyover of the White House, which happened, happened twice in a week. And, and uh, you know, I mean, they, they wound up convening the, the Robertson panel uh, a few months later to address, well, how are we going to tell the public and how are we going to deal with this? Hmm. Back in 1953, the Robertson panel decided the best way to do this was by ridicule and by the giggle factor, and by getting scientists that the, that the public looked up to uh, to say that this was all rubbish and, and that the people that were reporting, you know, seeing craft were, were crazy. And now this has been a stigma that has stuck with us for, you know, 70 years now. And... Uh, the way that they were reacting. But now they're trying to back off from that. Uh, I think that too much is out there in, in the public, you know, understanding that this is a real thing. And, you know, Congress is actually meeting quarterly with MUFON, with, uh, you know, the, the board of directors of MUFON. They want to know about our best cases. That's how serious mm -hmm. they're taking it. Oh, that's fantastic. That's really good. That that they're taking this very seriously. We're not um, getting answers now we only time. have 10 questions left, but we also okay. only have 25 minutes. So right. um, I want to get back to your 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 abilities. Um, do you feel you have the like power to heal others uh, after your encounter? I, you know, I haven't really experienced that, but I, I wouldn't put that out of the realm of possibilities. I, I, I have don't... you been healed by your encounter? In any uh, way. No, but I know some, I know people that have been. I know okay. people that have been. I know now, this is an interesting. With a, this... a fatal lung condition that was suddenly healed and, and no explanation for it. Yeah. This, has any, has information regarding the Earth's future been given to anyone who you've interviewed uh, who've had um, sure. close encounters? Yeah. What well, do you I, say? Uh, the the two things that people are left with, the two messages, and it, it, it's constant, and it doesn't matter what their background, their political influences, or anything is. The two things that people are left with is nuclear weapons are, are evil and wrong, and you're going to destroy yourselves with them if you don't stop manufacturing and threatening each other with them. So mm -hmm. nuclear weapons, number one. Number two, stop treating Earth like a garbage dump, like you've got another one over here that, you know, I mean, the idea that we're going to trash up Earth and then move to Mars once, you know, we've ruined the planet mm -hmm. is, is not true. Mm -hmm. And those are the two messages that people are left. Now, some people will have visions of, of like global calamity. You know, the, the, the coastal rim volcanoes all exploding at once, you know, uh, some people will have visions of nuclear war. Um, is, are these things going to happen? Well, I think that it's sort of like in, in, in Scrooge, you know, the visions of future, of possible futures. Um, I think that what we're, we're being told that we have to change our ways, curtail our destructive behaviors, or this is going to be our future. We're going to destroy ourselves. I think it's important enough that they're actually doing face-to-face -face encounters with us now. It's that so much of a risk. How come, how come they're warning us? Why, why do you think that is? Um, I, well, some people think that they are like our guardians, that they've been here since the beginning. Um, I kind of trend towards that idea. I, I think that the UFO phenomena, I think that it, it changes the way that it appears to people. Back in the 50s, people saw more nuts and bolts craft. Now people see these bright plasma-like disks and objects and orbs. You know, you hear that a lot. Um, but at the turn of the century in the 1800s, there were reports of these elaborate uh, airships that people saw. There's even a newspaper article where one of these airships uh, abducted a cow, which is hilarious. But, 
you know, I mean, it's like the same meme, really. Um, now, I think that back thousands of years ago, uh, people would see these things and they would call them gods. And, 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 uh, and but I, I think that it's the same intelligence and I think it's always been here. And this is right. the way that it manifests now that we're like at this point in, in our development. So they're like benevolent, uh, like I think guardians. So. Angels, you know? I think that there's various forces out there, though. I don't think that I don't think these are angels. I don't think they're demons. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that they are just a highly evolved other intelligence like ourselves. And Do I you think, think it's possible that the ETs are actually human beings who are visiting us from thousands of years in our future? Yeah, that's that's definitely a possibility. In fact, I think that probably some of the some of the encounters people are having are exactly that, which is good. That that gives me hope that we're going to survive ourselves. So yes. Yeah. Now, yeah. have the ETs? Um, are you in contact with them through dreams or or uh, daydreams or night dreams or any kind of like psychic? I contact? have dreams sometimes that I think are 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 meant to that are teachable moments uh yeah I've, I've had dreams like that a lot of people have those um, tell me what kind of knowledge they're trying to impart upon you like what is your mission in life what did they give you, <laughs> wow. did, you did, did they give you a purpose uh god i that that boy that's putting me on the spot because I, I i'm not sure i mean my purpose is is to really i want to understand this phenomenon okay honestly uh and i feel like i i am here to help others to deal with their ptsd that they've had and to help people wrap their heads around their own experiences okay. so i guess that would be my purpose in life now is to help people to be able to understand and accept what has happened to them and be able to get past the initial ontological shock that people have when when they've had these encounters. Yeah, they, in our community too, there's something called peer support, which means, and a peer is someone who's had a similar experience, yes. supporting someone else with that experience, yeah. It means a lot to people, even just to have somebody listen to them and believe them. Yeah. Because usually they've talked to their relatives or friends and, and, you know, people still giggle and roll their eyes and it makes people uncomfortable. You know? Yeah. So you, you, you said that it is possible that these are future, these are future uh, uh, evolved human beings, but uh, the, another uh, possibility is that they are actually traveling to us from like hundreds and thousands of light years away. Um, is there, did you uh, interview anyone who, who uh, was imparted with the knowledge of where they're from? Um, my friend, uh, Paul Hynek, his, fa his father was Dr. J. Allen Hynek, who is the Air Force's, uh, the Air Force, he ran the Air Force's Project Blue Book. That was, that was his baby. And, uh, and his son is now actively kind of following in his footsteps. And Paul Hynek has actually been doing uh, laboratory studies with DMT, trying to communicate with the entities that people uh, have contact with uh, in this altered state. And he thinks that it's the same intelligence that, uh, that people are encountering. So um, what was the initial question again? Well, I'm sorry. the initial question is, um... Uh, the theory that they're from, they, they, they're coming to visit us from deep, right. deep, deep in outer space. I, you know, most, a lot of us, but not all of us, but I tend to more think that it's a dimensional phenomenon. Uh, it gets rid of things like Fermi's paradox, you know, it's, you know, there's, there's so many stars out there, so much distance, and why us, right? But if they are coming from another physical world, okay, uh, if they're astronauts from another planet, in other words, uh, I think that this is a very old intelligence, that it's maybe possibly millions of years older than us, and that uh, there are certain ways that you could go and, and go through the very, all the galaxies 
and find planets that had the potential for intelligent life. Uh, and one way that you would do that is uh, by, by creating von, what they call von Neumann machines, which are self-replicating probes. Um, so this is one idea is, is that millions of years ago, even perhaps, uh, this highly intelligent uh, group sent these out across the galaxy in search of life. And uh, technically you could, you could, when you found a, a planet where it was clement and that life would, you know, that intelligence will possibly uh, grow up there, then you can set up base, right? And, and you can create uh, biological robots to come down and interact. And, and, and that, that's, that's one idea that actually works. I know Michio Kaku likes that idea, the astrophysicist. Uh, uh, I believe Avi Loeb, the famous uh, astrophysicist who saw the uh, the asteroid that came from out of our solar system that he felt was a craft, that he kind of thinks that the von Neumann machine uh, idea is, is, is probably the way that they're doing it. So if they're coming from other worlds and, and, and they're astronauts from other planets, that's one way that they could do it. But it would it would have to be something like that because you know there's as many stars as there are grains of sand on every beach of the ocean. You know, is it possible if they were astronauts that they'd be uh, <laughs> their craft would lift from their home world and then they would uh, travel through um, wormholes or something like in Star Trek? Well, that's, yeah, that's that's the whole thing about uh, about portals. It's just another name for a wormhole or, or Einstein Rosen bridge is the technical term for that. Uh, yes, that, that's that's my guess. And, and in fact, we've seen evidence for that. So, mm -hmm. all right. Well, Neil, I would I would like you to um, to Earl. close this out. <laughs> Are you thinking I'm Neil Armstrong? Oh no, I mean <laughs> Earl. I'm sorry, Earl. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Earl Gray. <laughs> Earl Gray Anderson. There you go. <laughs> Mr. Anderson. I know um, that's scary, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so why don't could you close us out with some words, some parting words that you feel I haven't like asked you or we haven't dealt with, but that's very important for our little audience to know to hear about this topic. Well, if any of you feel like you can relate to what I'm saying, and and this is meaningful to you. If you've had a, a, a if you've had contact uh, with beings, or if you've seen a UFO, um, if you go to mufon.com, it's M-U-F-O-N, mufon.com. We're the oldest uh, investigatory uh, UFO group in the world. Uh, when when the U.S. Air Force closed doors in 1969 with Project Blue Book. That's when we opened ours. Uh, we've been in existence for over 50 years now, and somebody like myself, or maybe myself, will take your case, we'll take it seriously, we'll talk with you on the phone, and uh, we'll figure out, you know, we'll help you wrap your head around what happened. Uh, if you've had contact with beings, you very well likely have a form of PTSD. A lot of people have trouble sleeping. Uh, they it changes a person's life. We are used to that and we know how to deal with that. We have doctors, we have psychologists, we have, you know, astrophysicists and all, all manner of, of, of experts in our group that will talk with you and will take you seriously. So MUFON.com, that's where you want to go. You just click the button that says, I'd like to report a UFO or click the button that says, I'd like to report an abduction or an entity visitation. Earl, I just thought of this one final question for you, and, and this is uh, from your experience personally and, and your, your mental contact and the contact you've had with other experiencers. Have the entities offered any solutions to our current uh, crisis and uh, the, you know this, this state of uh, affairs for humanity where we're living on the edge of destruction? Have they offered any solutions? I know that this phenomena is happening here. It's happening in Russia. I, I have 
you know, contacts and friends in Russia even, and they say the same thing is happening. It's just not in the news. You know, they're tamping it down there. China, it's worldwide, this phenomenon, and people are experiencing it everywhere. And I think that leaders are, are, experience it, are experiencing it. So hopefully they'll listen and, and, and they will heed what they're being told and that we stop ramping up nuclear weapons and, and stop threatening each other. Uh, there, there are better ways to, to, to create civilization, certainly. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's a lot. I mean, humanity is being expected to change some bad behavior that, that's followed us from since we were in the trees, really. Have the entities given us advice on how we could possibly change our animalistic lizard brains and minds sure. and greed and hatred hear, and all this? I hear a lot of, a lot of people are told that you need to elevate your vibration, that you need to that they want us to evolve mentally, spiritually, and, and though the way to do that is, is to live that way and to stop living like there's no tomorrow or that you're the center of the universe, you know? And I, I think that that is going to happen person to person, and that's why this phenomena is visiting people person to person. It's a personal phenomenon. If, if they suddenly showed up, you know, over every major city in the world, I don't think that would change us. In fact, I think we, it would make us worse. We would start shooting at each other and shooting at them. And this is why the weird bedroom scenarios where your room floods with light, they come through the wall, or they take you through the window or however it is that they meet you. It's one by one by one. 